Yeah, yeah what? Please. Okay, tape's rolling. Anytime. Hi, Nora. Hi, Peggy. How are you? Good. It's great to see you. It's Thank great you. to have you here with us. Thank you for having me. I'm going to ask you a few questions about what life was like, and I'm going to start off with asking you to tell me your full name and uh, where you came from. My name, my maiden name, my name is Nora Falvey, my maiden name Falvey, and my mom and dad were neighbors, and they met in London. And um, my mother said, a good mother never put a child wrong, and she listened to her mother, and they got married in London, and they came home, and they raised 14 kids on a beautiful farm, 90 acres, in the town of Kenmayer, right yeah. over Kenmayer Bay. In County Kerry. In yes. County Kerry. Yes. Yeah. Oh, for heaven's sakes. How did you come by your name? Were you named for someone? Um, Nora, for my wonderful, my dad's sister. Uh-huh. And, and Nora. And did you have a, a middle name? Uh, Agnes. And who was that for? I didn't know who that was in the family. There was no Agnes. All right, that you know of. All right. Yeah. And, and so your the county was Kerry, the town was It was Ken Mayer. And what was the parish? And the parish was Temple Nell. T E M P L E N O E, Temple Hill. And uh, would you tell us the date of your birth? August twelfth, nineteen forty-seven. That was August. 12th. And I was born in, out in the hayfield. My mom delivered me and brought me into the house because there was a midwife, and that's how I was born. Literally in the hayfield. Yeah. Well, she knew she got labor pains and she felt it coming, and they rushed for the midwife. She was in the house. Yeah. Wow, what an interesting story. Do you go back and visit that hay field on occasion? Oh, yeah. I went back every year until my mom passed away, and that was last year. Did she? So I haven't gone back since. Right. Will you go back? I don't know. I find it very expensive. Yeah. Yeah, and it has totally changed. Yeah. So it's not the same thing. Yeah, a 90-acre yeah. farm. And what, what, um, what type of farming did your family do? My dad did... Um, we had cows and pigs. We had our own meat. He'd bit, butcher a pig once a year, and he'd pickle that meat, and we'd have bacon and cabbage. And our supermarket was the field, stop and shop. We got everything <laughs> at the field. There was turnips, potatoes, carrots, cabbage. We had apples, pears. We had um, cherries, wild cherries. We had plums. We had so much. My mom used to always make jam, preserve the jam. We used to make homemade butter. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And we had the flour from the fields, you know, the butter from the cows, the milk. Yeah. And, and, and did you also sell those things? Yes. And my dad was also a fisherman, and he'd go down in the morning at 4 o'clock and set nets, and he'd haul in three or 400 fish, and he'd bring up a couple of dozen for breakfast and dinner. And then he'd sell the rest in the town in Kenmare at the fish market. Wow. Yeah. Do they still have that fish market? No. No. No, it's yes. all gone. It's gone. Mm -hmm. Now, you said you were one of 14. Where did you fall in line of the 14? There's six brothers and seven sisters, and I'm in the middle. I'm the eighth. You're the eighth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you name off your brothers and your sisters? Can you give me their names? Yeah. The, starting at the oldest, Michael, Bridie, Nula, Patty, Kathleen, John, Danny, myself, then uh, Jimmy, Nancy, Joseph, Monica, Sheila, and Teresa. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Are any of them still living in Ireland? Uh, yes, I have uh, three brothers and one sister. That are still there? And, yeah. Anybody still living on the family farm? Yes, my brother Jimmy. And it's a guest house. When I left home, my mom did B&B &B for 15 years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's nice. And do you, what's the... If you were standing now in, in your house as a child, when you looked out the front door, if you can imagine that, what, what, what would you have seen in front of you? Big green fields and animals out in the field, the cows, and we had a bull, a government bull, and all the neighbors used to bring their cows um, to that bull. For and then we're right over Kenmare Bay, which is beautiful. Oh, it is gorgeous. Yeah, and then the mountains on the other side and houses. Beautiful. So now there's a big fish market across the bay, all farm-fed fish, you know, salmon and all that. Uh -huh. Yeah. But essentially, has the farm stayed? Nine yeah, acres pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And the house is the house still the same. The house is still no. My dad expanded the home, so now it has like 13 bedrooms, maybe six bathrooms. 
Yeah. So that's when it became a guest house after right. the children grew up. And yeah, when it was kind of too late. <laughs> we should have had it when we were young because we had only four bedrooms. Yeah. And we all had to double up in beds. Yeah. What yeah. was the age variation? One year between all of us. So in 14 years? Yeah, your mother had except to... two was born in one year, the beginning, kind of, and then at the very end. Wow. Yeah. Wow. How was it growing up in that large of a family? Well, one helped the other, and we used to get a lot of hand-me-downs and, you know, a lot of sharing. And my mom was a great cook and a great provider. My dad was. So uh, we were kind of self-sufficient. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and was Kenmare as big a town as it is now? What, what was it no, not really. It's not as modern. It was very uh, like horse and carts, and now it's all cell phones and beautiful big cars. And not only that, I find there's so many new homes. It has grown up so much. And where my mom grew up is now an 18-hole golf course. Oh, wow. And there's all new homes around there. Yeah. Uh, at least 100 homes have gone up and in my little village. Wow. And, wh and what was the name of your village? Temple Nell. Temple Nell. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and that was, was the farm a family farm that had been handed down? To yes, for my grandfather, my dad's father, yeah. And, how, how and then he bought a farm of 40 acres that was called O'Neill's. And that's why they joined. My dad had 50, and then they put the other 40 together. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and, his, and his, your grandparents, did they come from that same area? They did. There? They were right from there. Your, both your mother's and your father's? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what was your mother's maiden name? Uh, O'Shea. O'Shea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. And they were right, you said she was right across the river? Is that what you said? Right said? across the other field. There's a big river separating them. Very nice. Yes. And there were seven in her family and seven in my dad's. So my dad said, why don't we put them together? And that's why they ended up with 14 children. Jeez. So did you have lots of cousins and all right Lots, nearby? yes. Mm -hmm. You must have felt like it was all just family. One children. big family, yeah. yeah. My mom used to cook about 15 pounds of potatoes, a huge apple tart in the black cast iron pot. They used to boil water, for, you know, make big pots of soup. And did she cook? Now, what kind of conveniences did she have? We had the open fireplace when I was young with a crane, and you'd hang the pots on it. And we had coal or wood and turf, peat. Yes. Yeah. yeah. How old were you when, or, or what year, did, the, did it come in that the, the electricity came into your area? In the 50s. In the 50s. And that's another thing my dad did. He made headstones when people passed away and did all the carving. And he put water in people's homes. He did. We were the first people to have water in the home, running water. Running water. And when was that? Way back in the 50s, 1958. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. so, yeah. And then electricity came in before or after that? Around that time, 53, 54. Yeah. Yeah. Electricity, yeah. And how did you travel around? Was Bicycle or shoe leather express would walk. <laughs> did yeah. you have uh, horses or... We had a horse and a donkey and bicycles, yeah. And when did your father end up having a car? Never had a car. Never had one. My mom and dad never drove a car. Yeah, yeah. they got chauffeur driven later on in life. Yeah, that's nice. Mm -hmm. That's nice that they had that, that opportunity. But it was mostly bicycles yeah. and a horse and cart. And where, where are most of your siblings now? They're in the States? I have one brother and two sisters in Arizona. I have a sister in London, I have a sister in Paris, I have two sisters and a brother in New York, and the rest are in Ireland. How often do you all get together? Uh, when my mom passed away, we all went home that summer. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you, not all together. Yeah. You, yeah. yeah. It's hard to get that many Very people hard. All together. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you visit back and forth, though? I used to go every year for like 15 years. So last year was the last year I went. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I won't be seeing it for a long time again. Yeah. Because now my husband and I are looking for a retirement home in the North Carolina. Oh, in that area. Yeah, in yeah. Wilmington. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, did your mother have a job outside of the home? Or? No, she was a homekeeper. She was a homekeeper. Yeah. So she married young and went from one farm to the next. Kind right. Of, kind of right. idea. Yeah. Um, how many people lived in your house? Except when she did B&B, &B, when we left home. Oh, right. When I left home. She did, did that for 15 years. So she was still raising children and doing B&B. &B right. She had time. three young girls to help her. Yeah. There was three left. Yeah. And then the other two brothers, they lived home. 
and worked on a farm and worked in a factory in Kenmare. What kind of a factory was that? They used to make rollers for the hair. Oh. Okay. And there was a fish factory. Uh -huh. And then there was also another factory where they made um, little corners for uh, photo albums. Oh, those little black ones? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they, um, um, how did you, you, you're a teacher, is that Yes. Right? Yes, and did you get your education in Ireland? I did up to high school. Okay. And then when I came to this country, I was a secretary for a mining company, but first I worked for Columbia Pictures, and I went to school at night. Oh, to become a teacher. Yeah. Okay. Tell me well, about school in Ireland. You were starting to talk to me about Well, that. school in Ireland, we had the local, it's called the National School down the road, and it went from kindergarten up to eighth grade. And a lot of kids never went past eighth grade, you know, they went out working, you know, to support the family. So I was fortunate. I went to Poor Clare's Convent in Kenmare. But the National School, it was neat. There was like big benches all along, and every row was a different grade level. So we were given different assignments. Like I'd be given, we'll say, kindergarten math, somebody else in the next bench in front of me, that was first grade, then the other bench was second grade and third all the way up to that room. It went from kindergarten to third, and then the other room went from fourth to eighth, we'll say. Wow. And how many kids would have been in the school at that time? There was anywhere from 80 to 100. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. And how many teachers? There was just one on either side. So two teachers. Today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Handled that many? Mm -hmm. That must have been really challenging, too. Yeah, there were big, long benches, and you sat, and, you know, everybody worked. There was the chalkboard, and you had different work to do. Mm -hmm. But then the, it dwindled down, you know, it got uh, did, smaller and smaller. Is that school still in service now? It's uh, owned by an English couple, and it's a beautiful house, yeah. So it's not used now as a school? No. Is there a rural school in the, your There's area? Th in Kenmare, they built a new elementary school which is like five miles away. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And Are, there's this technical school and the secondary, and there's a boys' school. And how did you get to school when you were? Rode the bike. Rode the bike. How yeah. far was it from your home? Elementary school, we walked, the national school. We walked one mile, and then we rode bikes. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. And and who taught in those schools? Uh, mostly nuns in the convent, and then lay teachers and just lay teachers in the elementary school. So you had brothers and sisters, right? There might have been a bunch before you or a bunch behind you. Yes. When you were in school. Yeah. And when you went home and did your homework, did you have help from those? No. No. They all, everybody did their own. Their own, their own yeah. business. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Well, if sometimes if we asked for help, we'd get it. Yeah. Was, import, was uh, uh, education important in your family? No, it wasn't that much, no. I think there were so many of us is that we had so much to do on the forum, is that we'd come and do our homework and then we'd come home and have dinner. Then we'd have to change our clothes, do our homework, and then go out and feed the hens and chickens and turkeys, put them in for the night, make sure the cows and calves were fed and then, and then the horse was in the barn, all that kind of stuff. So Wood cut for the fire and brought in. Lots, lots of chores. Yeah. Well, with 14 of you, it, it helped. But there was never 14 home at the same time because the oldest one was working when the youngest, when the youngest came along. Oh, yeah, is that right? That yeah. Makes sense. Like there was three working away when we were still going to school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And were they living at home? No. No. They, no. they moved down and, and right. started careers? Yeah. Moved to London. Oh, to London? Yeah, my oldest sister lived in London. And she did housekeeping. Uh -huh. And my brother worked in the forestry, and he'd come home, but um, he just left, you know. Yeah. Wow, that's, a, that's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Pretty amazing. Um, when, you were, when you would come home, so then an average day when you woke up in the morning, what time would you kind of start off your day as a child? We'd get up around 8 o'clock. Mom would have breakfast ready for us. In the winter, it was always oatmeal, and then we'd get this horrible cod liver aisle. <laughs> <laughs> would fill up our mouths and go outside the door and spit it out. <laughs> and then sometimes my, we had ate a lot of fresh fish growing up. And um, mostly we never had like cold cereal and milk, always our own milk and always like oatmeal. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, for dinner it was always bacon and cabbage five days a week. Wow. 
and on Sunday we'd have roast chicken, that was a treat. We had to go out and kill the chicken and um, sometimes a treat was roast beef or lamb stew or, you know, uh, beef stew, stuff like that. So My mom used to make wonderful soup. What kind of soup? Lamb make? soup, beef soup, chicken soup, big pots of it. And did you get the recipes for that and make it yourself now? No, not really. No? No. no. The meat there is much different than here, different flavor. Yeah. And then, of course, we had lots of hens and the eggs, had our own eggs. She used to make scrambled eggs, eggs and bacon, yeah. black pudding, white pudding. She used to make her own blood pudding. She did do it yeah, herself. Yeah, the black pudding. Yes. What I, I you, you know I know what it is, but what can you describe what that pudding is? I mean, when we well, say pudding, it's we the intestines it. from the pig you use and the blood from the pig, and you go to the river and she would use the intestines from the pig, the guts, to wash it out, and that was the um, the casing for the sausage. So. Um, So we used to have bacon and eggs and sausage and black pudding. But the black pudding, she used to always put it in the intestines. You wash them out in the river and then she'd bring them back. And you cut them a certain length and she'd cut little pieces of twine. So then you stuff them with uh, chopped, uh, they called it suet or lard, the white lard, onions, breadcrumbs, um, what are different, lots of different spices went in there. And then you filled it in, and you boiled it, and then we'd fry it. And that was so delicious. No wonder I have high cholesterol. <laughs> and now, compared to what you can buy now, what is there a big difference in the Oh, flavor? big difference, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very different. And some people made just big square cakes, just like a meatloaf, but it was black pudding. Oh. Or some people call it blood pudding. And so then, then it would just be sliced? And you sliced it, and then you fried it. Yes. Yeah. But the, I never realized that the boiling process cooked everything so that it was kind of preserved. It right, stay fresh. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. Mm -hmm. wow. And you said you, on a Sunday you'd go out and get a chicken? I mean, physically you'd well, go out? Well, we'd go out and catch, get a hen, and we'd pluck the back of the neck, and we'd have to cut it, or my dad would wring its neck, and we'd hang it up in the shed for two days, and that was fresh chicken. Yeah. And that was just, you talk about it like it was the most normal thing in the world. Right. And it really just, was, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. <laughs> so strange for us now, going to a supermarket to pick yeah. something else. Now, in your home, was Irish spoken? My dad did not allow Irish to be spoken, or even when we had homework. He had said it had to be done in school. So sometimes we used to have to sneak our books into another room and when he wasn't around. But he never liked it spoken. Why was that? Do you know? I don't know. Yeah. I think it's because he left home when he was young, grew up in London. Then there was a war. They had to wear gas masks, and they both came home and said, "You know, they live in Ireland." Yeah. And your mother but, had been in London too. How did how did she get to London? Oh, Why they went by boat yeah, to by work it. because there was a family of seven, and she had to go out and make money for the others. But. When she was growing up, when she was 13, she bought her own bicycle because she worked for a very wealthy family that lived there. They were called McClure's, and she saved enough money to go to London by boat. Yeah. Did they know each other because they lived here? They just knew each other as neighbors. As neighbors. Right. So in mm -hmm. traveling in Irish circles there, they kind of right. decided they met to and get they married. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so none of your grandparents or anyone lived with you? It was just it was the, nuclear, no. the family? No. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, obviously you said that you're... you're we really had no room in